Hello, shalom, Rastafari. Greetings to my Ethiopian brothers and sisters at home and abroad. There's so much to share, especially about this particular issue that has come has come to has come to mind in an extra special way because it goes to the heart of what we're what we're speaking about here when we speak about the good news of the King of Kings, when we speak about the gospel of his majesty. When we speak about Ethiopic, our first language, as well as when we speak about H I M Haile Selassie the First Bible and some of our notes on this particular subject matter it'll become clear why this had to be preliminary notes to his Imperial Majesty's Bible or the revised and hard Bible of the King of Kings. The first warning we want to give ones is this. Let's start out with a warning. And we're going to touch on a verse from uh, Watchman in a moment. These are two Bibles, right? Two Amharic Bibles. Which one is the original? Which one is the real deal? And which one is the fake and the counterfeit? Look. These are two Bibles right here. They're two Bibles. They even got it down with the uh, seven seals on the back of the book. But this is to warn you about the so-called fake Amharic Bibles out there. And this particular Bible. Do you know what this book really is? It's not His Imperial Majesty's Bible. This book is His Imperial Majesty's Bible, the Metaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals. This right here is a modern Ethiopian counterfeit. This is a counterfeit. Now people say, well, how can big counterfeit Bibles? It's basically this book right here. Now, most of you all know that we've been speaking about His Majesty's Bible, the Book of the Seven Seals, the Metaf Kedus. Those who have followed I, I ministry or has looked up some of the older works from almost the very inception of the Lion and Juice Society, even as an academic club. We give thanks and praise to His Majesty in Christ, and in particular to an Ethiopian sister named Leah Teferi, because it's through her that we first received His Majesty's Bible. In fact, we wasn't going to originally uh, do this, but this is, a, this is a copy right here. This is one of our first and original Bibles. It's sort of worn out, and we had it, we had it covered up right there. This is the book right here. You can you can tell it's kind of well worn. It's well worn. I think this is the one that has Rita Marley's uh, signature in it. We saw her one day at the at the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahido Beta Christian when it was in the Bronx. Yes, my brothers and sisters, and a few select pictures and certain other things that ones and ones would keep, basically in their Bible, a lot of notes and everything, but you can tell this is this is this is a smaller version of this right here. And this is probably one of the last the last kinds of His Majesty Bibles in this size. You can see the two different sizes. But we received back in nineteen ninety ninety one or so was this. And this is one that we was able to acquire more recently. But what has been going on we get to find out is that certain careless Ethiopians and some of them in the clergy, the Ethiopian Orthodox uh, Church, are seeking to suppress the 1961 revised Amharic Bible, the Metaf Kedus of his Imperial Majesty, and even to attempt to um, fool and deceive the public. And this is why we're bringing forth this warning about the real deal, the real Bible of His Imperial Majesty, vis-a-vis -vis the fake. And, and you can see some very clear indications of the differences. But we were fooled recently. This ministry of His Majesty was fooled recently by those careless Ethiopians and others who are, who are accomplices against the good news and against the gospel and against the works of his imperial majesty. In fact, let's just bring this in and get into our warning, the reason why we're 
bringing this forward and going to continue on this particular theme and, and this particular subject matter is very, very important because many have asked us four copies of his Manchu's Bible. Once they have become conscious of the fact that there is a book of the seven seals, there is a Bible of his imperial majesty, just like the Steel Pulse song goes, I discovered a version that's not the King James Version. For out of Africa came the Ganetta Eden or the Garden of Eden. I'm not sure whether Steel Pulse specifically had in mind the Metzhaf Kedus of his imperial majesty, this book. But this book right here is what we received recently in fact let's just bring this in like we said this book right here is basically the good news bible it is basically this bible you can sit down and read the side by side but it's an inferior it's an inferior and hard translation the fools will say well it's kelal bala amarinya it's it's easy and hard no it is makalal makalal amarinya not Magellel. It's not. It's not the pure Amharic of the Metzhaf Kedus. So you see how easily one could be fooled, and even what they have done is to switch the ISBN to give this new Bible, this so-called new translation or or Kellel Bala Marinya Turgun, the ISBN of this book, and even to put this picture. This picture of this book and this cover, which is the original Metzav Kedus of His Imperial Majesty, the Amharic Bible, the revised Amharic Bible, the authorized Bible of the King of Kings and His Christ, to replace the ISBN, in other words, take the ISBN from His Majesty's Bible and to place it on this particular Bible. And we must regrettably say that we were deceived. And this is very, very recent. Let's just show you this right here for a moment. Uh, let's bring this in. We actually just got this, this particular shipment um, very recently. We thought that we would have the pleasure to be able to finally say to some of the brothers and sisters and others, some, some even have pre-ordered the Metaf Kedus, His Majesty's Bible, and others have said that when it comes in, just let us know. So this is an investment that we were seeking to make in fulfilling our ministerial obligation to the brothers and sisters. Yet when we open this up right here, you know, they packed it. And, and now, it's, you know, this, this is an interesting deception that they played on us and that they're playing on a lot of people because, because as many Ethiopians, mature Ethiopians, mature Christians that understand the difference in the different so-called Amharic translations of the Bible. And not perhaps for the same reasons as we as Rastafari and as, and as Ethiopian Hebrews might not have the same um, uh, gravitation or magnetism to the work of His Imperial Majesty because He's our kinsman redeemer and, and they might just see Him as, as their last king of kings of Ethiopia and might not have any particular animus towards him or some of them don't even have much particular personal love towards him but many even recognize the superiority of his work which is the Metzhaf Kedus which is the 1961 translation now this uh, fake Amharic Bible now some people say oh fake that's uh, you're being a little bit harsh but it's fake for more than one reason. First of all, how are you going to take the ISBN from this, the 1961, and place it on this, the so-called 1980 version, or we can really say perversion, you understand that some foolish Ethiopians think it's a easier to read Amharic Bible. Not only is it a, an inferior translation, it's basically this new Bible, this 1980, the so-called 1980 Bible, is basically this book right here. You know this book? The Good News Bible. Because some brothers and sisters say, oh, oh I, got the, I got the Amharic Bible. Because they might have it for a so-called cheaper price or a more affordable price. Because we've, like we said before, we had to, every time we kept trying to re-up on Bibles, we were finding that, there were fewer and fewer 
resources or outlets for us to acquire the Bibles, and we've had to pay higher and higher prices to to get whatever remaining Metaf Kedus or His Majesty's Bibles out there. But it didn't really occur to us initially that there was something bigger. We had that, you know, that gut feeling that something was up because it was becoming more and more difficult to find His Imperial Majesty's 1961 Revised Amharic Bible. And we started to see this kind of show up here and there in place of it. But to think that they would take the ISBN that was on this particular book for years, the original, and to place it on this, this Western counterfeit. This is a Western counterfeit. This is like, this is like the Good News Bible, which you, which you probably already know. This is a Roman Catholic. The Catholics are behind this, basically. You understand? But the Good News Bible translated into Amharic. I mean, if one is just studying language, you know, just, just um, practicing, you know, their comprehension of language, you could take these two books, sit them down side by side, and read from one to the other. No problem. If that's what one want to do, if one sincerely liked the so-called new 1980 version of the Amharic Bible, no problem. But why are they suppressing the Metzhav Kedus of his Imperial Massey? Why are they suppressing the Book of the Seven Seals, the original, the 1961 translation that was authorized by Kedamawi Haile Selassie, by Haile Selassie I? the last king of kings of Ethiopia. Well, you know, the Bible already told us that, that in the latter days, what kind of people and what kind of persons that even would come in Christ's name or in Jesus Christos' name. And he said, you judge them by their fruits. And to see that the so-called Orthodox Church is behind this, and many of those who are in the pharisaical Moses seat of authority today in the church are behind this is, is a very saddening um, reality. But it's a reality nonetheless, and we already was warned. So this right here is a warning too, because as the scripture says, and let's bring in the scripture right here, Ezekiel, you know where it speaks about a watchman? In chapter 3, but we're here in chapter 33, where it says in 33, and let's go from verse 1. These are the ethical instructions for the captivity. And one very interesting thing is this is a day and a time, one of the first days and time in recorded history when so-called native, quote, Ethiopians, end quote, are in Sidet, are in captivity. They may call it asylum or refuge or exile, but basically they are also in a sort of a self-imposed captivity because of carelessness and disobedience and biting the proverbial hand that fed them, the elect of God, the shiyuma egaziyavi here. But here, Tinibete Hiskiel says this, Ethical instructions for the captivity. Again, the word of Egeziabihar Lotusapat came to me saying, Son of man, Yesolij, speak to the children of thy people, to the Ethiopians at home and abroad, and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. So this is a warn ord. This is a warn ord. This is a Rastafari warn order or a warning order, ordinance. This, this is warning. This is a warning. Mastenkekia. It says, when I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet, the melaket, the, 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 the shofar, and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, the melaket, the shofar, and taketh not warning. So somebody hear this message, 
and they don't take warning. What does it say? If the sword come, in other words, if that judgment, and there will be a judgment for these acts of suppression against the word of the king of kings, and particularly because of the animosity and the enmity against his book, against his last will and testament for us as Rastafari, trying to suppress and, and depress and distract us from the word of the king of kings and trying to put us back in mystery Babylon when we are those who are coming out, who are washing our garments in the blood of the lamb. But it says this, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. His blood shall be upon his own head. So if you want to not take warning from this, you understand that there are fake Amharic Bibles out there, and some might think you're getting a good deal. Oh, it says Amharic Bible. And listen, if you open it up and it says 1980, then it's the fake. You understand? It's basically the Good News Bible. If you buy one of those, then you just will buy one of these too. You understand? Then you can read their new fake 1980 so-called Bible. You know, you can do your own thing, but it says, he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver, shall save his own soul. So this is, this is more than even though we spent about uh, 200 plus dollars on this. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven or eight of these. You know, this was an investment from our meager resources, the, you know, the meager resources of the society, of his majesty, of the line of Judah, of this particular mansion of Rastafari. And, you know, well, we're going to get into a little bit more about this, but let's hear the warning. Let's hear how we should respond. We're saying clearly this is a warning. This is a warning about so-called fake Amharic Bibles and the suppression of his Imperial Majesty's revised Amharic Bible. And the deception also that they're seeking to do by switching the ISBNs and using the picture for His Majesty's Bible for their fake Roman subliminal, subliminal suggestion. But if the watchmen see the sword come, now, this is now on us. If we're a watchman, and if you're a watch, if I and I are watchmen, and we see the sword come, and we blow not the trumpet, and we don't blow the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, in his rebellion. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Understand how significant this is brothers and sisters, Yah is no joke. So thou, son of man, I have set thee a watchman to the house of Israel, to the house of Israel. Therefore, thou shall hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. So this is why we have to take the opportunity right now and just touch on this particular warning right here to, to warn you that there are at least, this is two Bibles out there. There's one of these is His Majesty's Bible and one of these is the Papal Roman Deception in Ethiopia face. And as one of these is a fake Bible trying to pretend to be the other. It's this one that's trying to pretend to be His Majesty's Bible by switching up the ISBN. We thought that we were actually getting copies of this, His Majesty's Bible, and those who were able to order copies of it. And there's more brothers and sisters who've been waiting months, it almost seems like even more than a year, perhaps, you understand, that ones have been waiting to receive their own copy of this. Still, one should abide their time studying the Bait, the Fidel, you understand, and staying tuned to some of the other updates that we have. In fact, that's why we had um, showed some of the books from the beginning of this right here that ones are highly encouraged to obtain 
a copy of, such as the new Ethiopic, as well as the, the updated um, Amharic Bible. Homeschooling is coming forward, hopefully, within another Subaye, another week, you know, Subaye, the seven days or so, um, it will be available. But this is a warning, my brothers and sisters. If the Bible says 1980 and looks like this, you understand? It's basically, it's basically this book, the Good News Bible, written in Makalel or Kelel Amarinya. And be warned. Please be warned. You understand? Um, there's, there's one other thing I want to show you. I want to share with you. Uh, just so you know who's who, what's what, some of the information right here. We ordered this from some place called right here, some international Bibles, right? And this is this is like part of the um, receipt, so forth and so on that we received. Now the product name is Amharic Bible. Then it had, like we said, we search via the ISBN. Now we can't even go further and prove that they have been doing these deceptions. This is very, very deceptive, what they're doing. You understand? Because what they are doing is playing with people's faith and seeking to deceive, you understand, while doing a so-called good deed, you know, distributing Bibles. But why are they putting um, an item number that was the, to an older work to some newer work that already had its own distinct item number Previously, because we have, you know, we have, we already have, we're already familiar with this. We've talked about this before in some of the older videos. You know, we're saying concerning the 1961 versus so-called 1980 Bible, where he dealt with briefly with this subject matter. But at that time, they did not fully switch over the ISBN. Then they say HC. HC is hard to cover. Now, please, my brothers and sisters, they say. This is what we. This is one copy of the other books here that we just ordered, right? Thinking that, or going on what their advertisement said that it was this Bible, which we know as His Majesty's Bible. Now, notice they say this is hardcover. You see this? You see this? They say this is hardcover. This is hardcover. Same force. This is hardcover. You can see this right here. This is hardcover. This is hardcover. This is not hardcover. You see, so, but um, um, it's kind of a key. We notice that they use this kind of so-called cross on the cover, and you probably see a lot of Bibles out there with, with it. Now, for immature Christians, e even Ethiopia speakers, this kind of Bible probably will, will, will do. But for those more mature um, Ethiopian Christians, whether they are Orthodox whether they are Wengalawi, Pente, and we've met, we can't say them all, but we met many from different, you know, who are Ethiopian Christians but may not still be Orthodox but belong to another denomination. You understand? But those who are mature, those who understand the value of language, they all admit that this, His Majesty's Bible, is a superior Bible. You understand? It is, we can almost call it a classical work of literature. And it's also very much in tune with the Hebraic, Masoretic, and the Septuagint and the older um, Turgamot or translations of the Bible. In fact, the Iot uh, Amharic Bible software and a lot of other um, mature Christians. Ethiopian and hard speaking Christians often utilize this particular Bible. You understand? And, you know, His Majesty's Bible. But there is some creeping coup even now against His Majesty's Bible. And we're putting all of this forward, at least initially, so that one can be warned. So, on a couple of, on a couple of points, we see that this is willful. This is, a, this, is, this is a willful deception. And we're just saying to our brothers and sisters, let us come together and, and, and pool our resources 
so that we can fully print and publish His Majesty's Bible for our society, for our people, and for the brothers and sisters out there, whether they are Ethiopian Orthodox, whether they are Wengelawid Pente, you know, Ethiopian at home or abroad, or other people who would request and should be able to receive a copy. We have to do this for ourselves. There's a, there's a willful and a, a, purp a purposeful um, um, campaign of deception and suppression of the Metzhaf Kedus of His Imperial Majesty. And this, this happens for us to be just one of the most recent examples where we were seeking to order this, but we got this. This is 1961, His Imperial Majesty's. This is 1980, the Pope and Satana and the accomplices of, the, of, of Mystery Babylon is behind this one. So it's a Bible war here, a clash of the holy civilization versus the Decepticons out there. They added again, brothers and sisters, so be... Please be warned, stay tuned, more to come, Yahweh and Shalom.